Hey guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. Well, it's Wednesday again, so that means we're doing another Whip It Wednesday video where I show you everything that I've worked on in the craft room this week, whether I just touched it for a little bit or I've worked on it for long enough to finish it. I do have one finish this week, but it's nothing that big, but we'll get to that later. Right now, it's a little hard to tell how much I've worked on this, this cruel embroidery pattern because I've just been kind of dotting the little colors all the way across again. I'm just trying to take one color and then fill it in all the way across, and I've been coming back and putting another color in. And with the design, it's kind of hard to see exactly where they want you to put the colors, so I'm just kind of making it blend nicely and going as close to the picture as I can. So once again, just a bunch of a little bit in the waves here. I'm I'm holding off on the sail over here. I want to get through this part, the waves down here. This is the tedious part that's not quite as fun. So I want to go through and finish this up and get this done, and then I'll go ahead and work on the sail. So I just have a little bit of the boat and then the sail after I'm finished with the waves down here, and that'll be done. I decided only to bring my miter square blanket out at the beginning of each month. There's, there's really no need to see one or two squares every week or even up to seven squares. So I thought we'd just do a month in review and I'll show you all the squares that I put on for the past month. So I did put a lot on in November because it was November. It's a busy month. But I have been adding a few. So I'm on this pink square here that leaves me one more square to finish off this section. Let me pop this off so we can see my crochet hook in there for when I make mistakes. But there's my last corner. So I have I have five and then I just started this pink one up here and then like I said one more and it'll finish off that corner. And I have been continuing down at the bottom to try and widen it up. So I added another four squares there. I'm not sure, I have to decide. At this point, I'm definitely gonna decide how wide I want it, because I wanna bring this all the way up as wide as I want so that I can work my little my little diagonal. See, I've put one in the corner here, and then I'll put the three over here, or the two here, and then I'll put the, I guess it's like three or five up there. And I just wanna keep building it out as a diagonal that way, because I find that I don't like to go back and forth in rows. When I do this step and staircase, it allows me to uh, choose where I want to put my, my yarn colors. So if I have this red one here and a burgundy here, well, if I have another red, maybe I can put it here. But if I was only doing side to side rows, it would be harder. I, I could always wait to put it in, of course, but I don't want to wait. I want to, I wanted two, two squares at a time. I don't mind that if there's two close to each other. I just don't want them to be maybe in the same little, maybe a little nine patch area. So as long as it's not in this area, I wouldn't mind putting this same red square right here. It doesn't bother me. I'm not doing only one of each color in this blanket because I want to use up all these scraps and I'm not worried about them being near each other, like I said. Because like here's another red one here that matches this one. So you can kind of almost play a matching I Spy game and find the different ones that match. So now you won't see this again until in January after the new year. And by then, I think I'll have already started another. They have they came out with a new, a new uh, miter square blanket for using your your little leftovers of your sock yarn. It's it, it goes like this more into an arrowhead. I'm gonna put a picture here, and I'll go ahead and put a link to the pattern down below. I picked it up the other day and it was free on Ravelry. I don't know if it's still free, but if it is, it'd be a good time to grab it because you're doing, you're making your, 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 you're knitting in columns. And so you can choose if you want to just use a little bit of your leftover yarn or if you want to make a longer piece. So if you only have, if you have two grams left or if you have five grams left, you can actually use all of it up. When we're knitting these squares here, when you're done with the square, you're done. So if you have, if you have just this little bit left, you know, maybe another yard or two of yarn, what are you going to do with it? Well, with this new design, you can go ahead and use it all up. And I just like the way that it looks like arrows. I made one more of the folded hexagon ornaments. I wanted to try it with none of the interfacing stabilizer inside of it. And I find that it's just a little bit flimsy for me. I definitely like it more when it has some interfacing in it. I use a very lightweight one, so it's not like it's gonna make it very stiff. Although for an ornament, it really wouldn't hurt to be a little bit stiffer. 
you can see it, it made it a little bit harder to get the folds just right so I do have some more spaces here I like that this allows me to have a crisper edges to everything and it, it stays where I put it where when you just have the straight up fabric it doesn't it doesn't necessarily stay it kind of does whatever it wants to do So if you watched me last Friday, you've already seen the ornaments I've made, but I did try out one more. Oh, and I, I went ahead and I just glued the button on the back this time to see how that would work to cover up the threads. And I used a tacky glue. It was just an AC Moore brand, not the good Aline's tacky glue, but it still worked out really well, and I think it would hold it pretty good. I did still stitch down this one because stitching this button down also held all these tips in place in case I didn't get them stitched very well. So I kind of like that. I was thinking about looking for some clear buttons, not just like white, but actually clear see-through. So it would, you could either match the fabric with a pink like this or a clear one, which would match everything. One of you awesome, amazing subscribers had suggested that I make kits for these to put them into my art fire shop. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. I'm going to go through what I have in my stash right now to see what I can come up with for a kit. And then I'll just put a couple in the shop to see if anyone's interested in them. And then if you guys do like to have a, an ornament kit like that, every week when we want to do an uh, instructional video for the ornaments, I'll go ahead and put some kits into my shop. But first I need to go and do a little shopping and figure out which ornaments I'm going to do for the rest of this month. I've had a request for some felt ones in addition to the fabric, so we'll definitely be doing that. So do you guys think it is a good idea to have some kits in the shop? I started a new knitting project because I needed one more hat for a gift. This is the leftover from when I made the twin boys their, their turkey hats, their gobble gobble hats. So I had some more of this brown, and I thought this would be fine for a guy. Guys, a brown hat's good for a guy. So I'm just doing a, I don't know if you can even see, because it's dark yarn. This is just a rib design like you would have on the brim of the hat. And I'm going to carry it all the way up through the hat so that it goes all the way to the top. That way, depending on the gentleman's head size, it could stretch and fit a multiple of sizes. At least I'm going to try to get this done for a gift. If it starts taking me too long, then I will just go ahead and skip it. This is just going to be an extra gift. I've already made this person something, so they'll be fine without it. But I thought a nice warm hat would be a good bonus gift to go with their other gift. I thought I'd give you a close-up peek of my daughter's Stars and Bars quilt that you saw yesterday in the Talk To Me Tuesday. If you want to see it all laid out in its long glory, then just go ahead and pop to yesterday's Talk To Me Tuesday video and I ramble on about it there. But I thought since I could show you a close-up that I could show you, I'm not going to cut, I'm not going to um, get the seam ripper out and change these, but I'm not very happy. I tried to, when I laid it all out my squares, I need to find a better way of organizing my squares to go from my layout, my my design board to my sewing machine because I keep getting everything mixed up. I did not want to have, I wanted these squares so that it was on the outside of the project, like to totally flip this one out. And then this one wasn't supposed to be here. It was supposed to be on the outside because I don't like how light and white this is against here. Now I love this star fabric. This is this is like almost the end of it for me, but it was a really favorite fabric of mine. It made it into many, many quilt projects. But when you're looking at it, it's too similar to here. So when it's in the center, it's not bad. But when it's in the outside, then it didn't quite work as well. But I like it and it's fine and I'm not going to change it. This is a little bit right here, just a couple squares is not going to affect the overall look. It's one of those things where if I were to do it again, I'd pay more attention. I really, like I said, I really need to find a better system of deciding how to get from my design wall to my sewing machine. So not only did I have these blocks twisted and out of order, I also had them going up and down and set aside by side. Now I know with the layout that I have, it was no big deal. I just, instead of having sewing it one way I just twisted them and put them the other way so it worked out fine but in the future I'm really gonna have to figure something out because this system is not working for me I, I'd lined them all up and I had them all numbered and I had them nice but once I just got to where to the sewing machine things just went a little crazy the three color cashmere cowl has come back out for a visit I am finishing this up for someone to give as a gift I was here last time many many weeks ago probably only like three so I put a good bit on it. Now I've actually done this section. 
I had a little bit more than this done and I've done it twice because I knit this side and the design looked perfectly. But then when you went to this side, it was messed up. Now what this section is, it's just to give you an idea of how much is left also. This is my three color cashmere cowl. So I only have this section right here left, the solid piece and then the stripes and then the ribbing. But can you see how there's kind of like these ridges? It has, there you go, let's look at it here. It has this lace section and what it is basically is is like a chevron and I've been looking at it as like mountains so you're going up in the mountain and down into the valley. So when I was knitting this I knit one side and I got mountains and valleys beautifully. But when I got over to the other side and I looked at it I had an avalanche. There was no distinguishable mountains or valleys anywhere. It was just it was a, it was a terrible mess. But this now I I pulled it all out. I spent one day, one night knitting it and then pulling it back out. And then I worked on this again last night and it's looking really good. And even both sides match now. So that's going to look really nice. I still have a bit of work to do on it, but compared to how much I've already finished, I only have this little bit, just a few inches left. So that should go pretty good. Once I get past the lace section and then I'm just going through and I'm just knitting again, this section will go pretty quick. When I get to the part that's uh, the striping section, I think I'm just going to go with the light purple and the dark purple and leave this be the only accent of the red and white. In my original thoughts, I was going to put some, I was going to stripe it up here with the white and the dark purple, but I decided to just leave this one accent here. I like this one bit and then just let the rest be purple on the top and bottom. That way it'll be mainly a purple cowl and with this fun little candy cane stripe in the center. Now you're really not gonna be able to see what this is. It just looks like, a, well, you can tell it's a pillow, right? I decided that it gets kind of cold. I have a tile floor in, in my craft room. I have these rubber mats all around the stand on at my cutting table, but my dog likes to hang out with me in here. And for some reason she won't lay on the rubber mats. She likes to lay on the cold tile floor. But she, in January, she is going to be 12. So she's getting kind of old and her hips are starting to bother her and I wanted her to have something nice and comfy to lay on. So I decided to make her a pillow. So the cats lay on the pillow and the dog lays on the foam mats next to the pillows. So she'll get used to it eventually and lay on it. But what I did is I had these old pillowcases. The kids and I were doing tie dye one summer. So I took this pillowcase and then another old pillowcase and I just stitched them together side by side. So you can see it's just an actual pillowcase. They used to be white or something from the store. This one got dyed pink. We didn't tie dye very well. This one, as you can see, we didn't learn about setting the dye. So, but I've had these for since Robbie was about eight, so maybe about 11 years. Uh, Cause I'm not gonna throw away anything. You never know when you're gonna need it. And look, I found a use for it. I'm making a dog bed out of it. And here's the flap that you would, you know, put your pillow, insert your pillow in. I just went ahead and stitched it closed in a couple areas. And I took some of that fabric that I say that's my ugly fabric that I'm never gonna use for anything. It's this blue and flowers. It's, I'm just not a fan of it. And what's inside the pillow, so then I use this ugly fabric just to make a pillow covering. She is a dog, she is going to shed, it's going to get dirty. So I went ahead and put a pillow cover on it. That way I can easily take it off, take it outside and shake all the fur off and wash it as needed. Now what I put inside these pillows, you can see it's kind of squishy. First I had an old pillow that I took open. It was one of those $2.50 ones you get from Walmart. I used to buy my kids them every year for Christmas because they would just go through pillows like crazy. And it had, it was more like quilt batting in it where you can, they had these layers where you can just shred it apart like this. So I shredded that all apart. One of my other projects from last week is I had my scrap bin of scrap fabric as I'm working throughout the week and I finish a project. If there's just a little bit and not enough to go back on the shelf, I throw it in this basket and then when the basket gets full, I'm supposed to do it every week, but when the basket gets full and it's so full it's overflowing and I can't push it down anymore and it's got a big mound, then I spend an afternoon and I go ahead and iron what needs to be ironed and I cut it into my strips. I do the, the I cut a one and a half, two, two and a half, three and a half, 
and then a five inch and then anything above five inches goes into a special thing if I have special fabric I save it but I just went through and I cut a whole bunch of strips and I emptied out this basket now the reason I'm telling you is because anything that I trimmed off and that was left over from those strips I took my rotary cutter and I just cut it all up into little pieces like it was being shredded and that's what I used to go ahead and stuff Susie's pillow imagine two regular bed size pillows next to each other and this is you can see it's just nice and soft I didn't want it rock hard I wanted something that was gonna cushion her she has something similar to this in a dog bed that we purchased but I didn't want to spend another thirty dollars just for a flat pillow to put in the craft room for her not knowing if she was gonna actually lay on it and you know thirty dollars is a bit much for a cat bed a cat bed so I have that all in there so there's that extra pillow that was all shredded up in there and then all those little bits of fabric and it makes these nice valleys that the cats, they, they like to put their bodies in here and just make a little channel that they can sleep in. So if you're looking at this, basically this is a free project. The pillow would have been thrown away, but I learned to save those for projects like this. The pillowcases, because I'm a pack rat and I save everything, and this ugly fabric was actually given to me in a box of, someone had donated it to an auction house and it never sold so the box came to me for free as a gift and the reason it didn't sell is because there was mostly fabric like this but there were a few treasures in there that was worth the ticket of admission there what is that saying the cost it's worth the price of admission so so like I said it's pretty much just a free project Susie's got a pillow to lay on the cats can steal it whenever they want and it keeps her up off the cold floor once she gets used to it. She's the type of dog that takes her a while to get used to something new in the house. I always hear people talking online that they save their fabric scraps like that, that they'll put a pillowcase, they'll ta uh, tack it to the end of their cutting table, and as they're cutting all their little scraps that they're gonna throw away, they just slide right into that pillowcase, and when it's full, they sew it up and donate it to one of the animal shelters. I always thought it would be really heavy and too firm and hard for a dog to lay on but if you're careful and you don't make it too full then it works out really well especially if you add in the extra fuzziness from that pillow I did one more thing I hand stitched a four patch there's a quilt along going a hand stitched quilt along that's starting up next year in January I'm going to go ahead and put a link down to the blog down below it's Elm Street quilts I believe and they're gonna teach us how to cut our fabric how to draw the lines around it, how to do our seams, how to hand stitch and everything like that. They gave us a quick little rundown video, but they're gonna teach us four patch. I believe we're doing half square triangle or flying geese. It's gonna end up being a nine patch quilt where the centerpiece ends up around 22 by 33 and then you put a border around it. So that's gonna be next year's project. I've been wanting to hand stitch a quilt for a long time. So this way I can learn how to hand stitch the quilt and I can hand quilt it. So that's gonna be really fun. So I did a little bit of practice. I used a white thread so it's hard to see or a gray thread I believe it is. But I need to do a little bit more practice on getting my stitches even. It's a little bit of a process as you're popping it through like this and working your needle through. So it's just gonna take practice like anything else but it came out really well. Look at that, my center is beautiful. I have a nice little four patch. I have not ironed it. They recommend that, well, they suggest that you get one of those those little wooden roller irons to do it so you can roll your seam that way. I don't have one of those yet, so that's on my list to pick up for the quilt along next year. But I don't want to press it yet until we find out all the fancy things about how to get your seams to lay just right. But there's my four patch. Now, I don't normally tell you too much about any new projects that's going to be coming up in the works next week, but I have received a couple things in the mail as gifts, and I just wanted to show them to you and let you know some of the projects I'm going to be working on. I belong to a group on Facebook that if you have a request for a specific yarn or something, maybe you're collecting it to make some charity projects, or you just don't have the money and you could really use some help to make some Christmas gifts, that you can post a request in there. Well, several months ago, a lady posted a request, and uh, recently someone else chimed in and said, hey, she'd wanted some leftover sock yarn to put into her miter square blanket. But she could only use yarns that were washable because she planned on putting it in the washing machine. 
Now mine's gonna go in the washer and dryer and I'm not particular. I know different yarns are gonna react differently in the washer, but I throw my socks in the washer and dryer all the time and it is what it is and it's gonna be just my blanket and if something happens with the yarn, I can just replace a square, it's not a problem. So the lady could not accept, this one lady offered these yarns up for her and the lady said, I'm sorry, I just it's not gonna work for me because I need to know what the content of the yarn is. So I said, hey, if nobody else wants it and you still want to get rid of it, can I have it, please? And she said, sure, Robin, here you go. So I'm going to be able to add these to my miter square blanket. They came all wrapped up in skeins, and I've been balling them up this week, just rolling them up so I can knit from them. And that's going to be going into my miter square blanket. I just wanted to show you all the fun colors. I really like some of these. And once again, you see them and you're just like, oh, that would be a fun sweater. That would be a fun hat or mittens. So I'm hoping to go ahead and use these to go once also in to start into my miter square blanket and then anything that's left over I'm going to put it into that new blanket I spoke about. Now some of them were tied off so when as you were wrapping it up you just got little pieces like this and that's perfectly fine for that new blanket. As I said you can put any length of yarn in there that you want and that'll work perfectly. So I have myself a little half gallon size bag of scraps to play with. Another wonderful thing that I got in the mail that has nothing to do with an upcoming project, but I can't wait to show you, is I received some wonderful cards in the mail. Now, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but this was my first Christmas card. I got this, I buy uh, S'mores' food from Chewy.com because she has to have a special prescription food, and they sent her a Christmas card. And I just thought, how fun is it? They got the selfie stick and all the different animals, even got a goldfish, you got a squirrel hiding in the background. I thought that was a really fun card to get in the mail for her. Happy holidays from Chewy.com. I'd also received You'll see one of the future things that I'm going to show you in a second, but I received this fun card. This came in a package with a couple of items for me. And I thought, oh, that's a really cool picture with the little hat and sweater. That's really nice for people who are knitters to give a, a thank you card or a Christmas card to other knitters. But then when I got looking at it, it's a Lion Brand card and it has the patterns on the back here for the striped cardigan and hat. And then you have plenty of room on the inside that you can write letters to people. But how cool is that, that they have a picture of the baby, adorable baby. And then you got the project notes and everything on the back right there so you can just whip up your project. That's two gifts in one. And then I received this card. Now how fun is that? That is Mary Poppins and this, can you see, it is all thread. It is just done with thread art where they stitched over and over again and then they just let the thread go everywhere. This is Mary Poppins and I would guess that this is the website where you can get it from. HeidiRhodesTextiles.com There you go. Now that would be really fun. That is a fun card to give as a gift to other people that are fiber artists. I mean everything. You've got some fabric here. I'm guessing this is what Big Ben and then you've got the fabric clock and a little bit of fabric here, but then everything else is just thread. Look at the kids. It is just, it's awesome. I was just so thrilled to get this card in the mail. Because I received, all in a matter of just a few days, I received all three of these cards. And I thought, well, this was exciting. And then after I opened this one up, I'm like, whoa, look at this one. Because when you're out searching for things that, a card that's related to your craft, sometimes it's getting really hard to find something that's not handmade. Now, I would imagine that this woman is a handmade one that it's actually making cards. And then you have plenty of room on the inside to write your note. But I would buy a packet of these, especially if you had like, if she, I'm gonna have to go look at her website. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet to see if she has different cards, but that's very fun. So those were fun cards that came in the mail. Now for the next upcoming project. These came with the Lion Brand card. They are, let me get them out of this shiny plastic so you can actually see. These are embroidery patterns and it's for a red work Santa and a blue work snowman. These are meant to be door stops. This is an actual picture when they put the actual photograph on the patterns. I think that's always kind of cool when they do that. 
that's why you're getting a lot of that shiny. But see, this is an actual, it's a hand embroidery. It looks like it's basically just a back stitch with some French knots added in for the buttons and such. But it's meant to be a doorstop. It's a Mr. Snowman doorstop from Bird Brain Designs. It tells you the different things that you're going to need to make your design and your pattern and such. And the same thing here with the snowman. Look at all the details. Look at those presents. This is going to be so much fun to stitch out. Christmas tree and everything. And once again, it is Bird Brain Designs and it's a Santa Claus doorstop number 627. The snowman is 626. And I like when they have these when they're in the plastic sleeves like this. You can see the design on the front, and when you flip it to the back, before you leave the store, you can see everything you need to purchase. Now, if that wasn't enough, it also came with some fabric to make them on. Now, I'm just going to think that it's the fabric for them because it seems to match really well. This would be good for the snowman. Now, I'm not going to be making door stops. I'm going to go ahead and still make the, the when I make the wall hangings, I'm going to go ahead and flip these guys over. They're kind of shiny. So I'm going to make the wall hangings with them like I've done with my other embroidery. So this would make a nice border and then to embroider the snowman onto this muslin. And then here's one for Santa. This is really nice. It's almost a canvasy feeling fabric. It's really thick and sturdy. So this will be really nice to go with that red work Santa. And then just a simple muslin. So that is going to be wonderful to work on. I'm going to try to hold off and not start it right away. And when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking I should start with the snowman because he has less details on him. And if I don't finish, I don't even care if I finish them before Christmas, they'll be perfectly fine to use next year. But this snowman would last through the winter. But then Santa Claus, he's got all those fun details. He's got all the little buttons and everything with the little, like the prairie point thread going all the way down. Oh, there's even candles it looks like on the side. I mean, there's just so many little fun details to see. The Christmas tree coming out of his bag, his jingle bells. Okay, let's take a vote. Which one do you think I should do first? Do you think I should do the Santa or should I do the snowman? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and I'll let you guys decide for me. Maybe I'll see if I can put a poll up in the community tab with a picture of each and then you guys can vote there. But what also came in the package, which is really kind of cool for me, I think, is this is a different type of embroidery hoop. I've seen several people in the floss tube when they use this for their cross stitch. And this is a like a spring loaded one. Well, there's no spring, but you kind of hold it together. So you have this plastic and it has a little groove in there. And you have the metal ring. So you put your fabric in it and then you add this back in and the metal goes into that groove and it's supposed to hold your fabric nice and tight. Now I've seen 10 people say they love it and 10 people say they don't like it. So I'm going to give it a try when I'm working on this project and see how it does. Because I feel like it's not going to maybe, maybe it won't smush my stitches as much as a regular embroidery hoop. We'll see. Maybe I'll watch some videos to see some pros and cons and little tips and tricks for it. So that's what I worked on this week and some of the things that I'm going to start. I shouldn't start them, but I know I'm going to want to at least get it all sketched out and traced onto the muslin. Yeah, I have the perfect color red and blue for these two. I have plenty of floss for that. So we'll see. You guys definitely let me help me decide which one I'm going to start first. I hope you guys get plenty of time to work on your projects if you're making any Christmas gifts because that time is coming pretty close. It's getting, what do they say, you need to mail by the 15th or the 17th if you're mailing priority in order to get it there in time for Christmas. Okay guys, you guys have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye!